Welcome to Sinister Heroes. I'm your host, Danny Iniquitous. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, this is a channel about Dungeons and Dragons. We're trying to take a darker tone with everything we do here. So if you like edgy kind of content, definitely hit that like and subscribe button. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters. We love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. What you do for us is amazing, and we are so grateful for it. A big thank you to our good friends over at Critical Failures. We're part of a live stream game. Check us out Wednesday nights. Uh, and without further ado, we're going to jump into this week's video, the start of all the Talzerai um character subclasses and we're starting with the college of tragedy bard college of tragedy bard comes to us from the tal Dorai campaign setting reborn this is the critical role campaign setting that they made for fifth edition that is actually part of fifth edition so there was a couple of subclasses in here that you don't see anywhere else and a couple of other things that are really interesting and unique specifically for that kind of world so you'll see some incredible things here like the echo knight and things like that uh, and we will cover them all that being said um with a lot of the critical role campaign stuff it does have its own like world and you you know deities and all that stuff that's tied into their campaigns and their storylines and their world so uh you will see some themes like that come through in this book that being said uh a lot of the subclasses are kind of hit or miss uh some of them are strong some of them are cool some of them are great in theory but you know it kind of comes with a different kind of mentality uh you kind of got to accept that you know the critical role people play their game significantly different than most other people play it so uh you know just take it a little bit easier when you go through these classes because some of them again are great and really strong and some of them are kind of really hard to figure out the college of tragedy bar does have some cool little flavor text paragraph which i'm going to read for you not all grand stories conclude in triumphant victory many tales end with death and despair and bards of the college of tragedy know that sorrow and pathos are emotions just as potent as joy and delight these bards specialize in the power of tragic storytelling weaving words and spells together to dramatic and devastating effect which all right there kind of just you know screams my name uh, i really enjoy a lot of that and i think it's a pretty cool way to kind of envision how this bard is take it as you will on how you want to endure that or, or what you think uh that's going to reflect well or not with with the subclass but i think it's a great idea to get into that mindset of what they're trying to create here uh one of the first abilities is Poetry in Misery. When you join the College of Tragedy at third level, you learn to harness the beauty in failure, finding inspiration in even the direst twists of fate. Whenever you or an ally within 30 feet of you rolls a 1 on a d20 for an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can use your reaction to soliloquize and regain one expended use of your bardic inspiration feature. This is great, um, depending on <laughs> how lucky your party members are and the circumstances, you will see ones pretty often. Personally, I think failures really push a great amount of uh, uh, invention in what the campaign goes through. I think it's great for just changing the way it works and creating these great, exciting moments. So getting a bonus for that and getting a use of your bardic inspiration back is pretty great considering how often you use it this also does not mean that the person that has the bardic inspiration failed and got a natural one this means any one of your allies that are within 30 feet of you so a bigger party you'll see this happen and with considering how many rolls you make in combat this might happen more often than usual so it does give you the opportunity to be a little bit more free with your bardic inspiration and not feel as if you can't use them because you're so limited with them uh, your other level um, ability at third level is sorrowful fate starting at third level you can exploit a foe's peril to instill deep feelings of sorrow and doom when you or an ally you can see forces a creature to make a saving throw you can expend one use of your bardic inspiration die to change that type of saving throw to a charisma save instead if the target fails this save Roll a Bardic Inspiration die, the target takes psychic damage equal to the result, and is played with regret for one minute. If the target is reduced to zero hit points during this time and can speak, they are magically compelled to utter dark, poetic, final words before succumbing to their injuries. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. This is awesome. Um, a lot of monsters you will fight 
have very bad charisma scores. A lot of undead have dismal charisma scores. Beasts, um, regular monsters, regular humanoids, a lot of them will have very bad charisma. This is a great way to take some of those spells that have like constitution saving throws, turn it to a charisma, and add additional damage to that. And my favorite part is that they are magically compelled to utter dark poetic final words before succumbing to their injuries. That's just fun and it just kind of pokes a jab at your DM and kind of puts them a little improv on the spot to hilariously kind of, you know, roast <laughs> the character or creature that's dying. Uh, which is a lot of fun, especially if they don't speak and they're like an animal or something. It's great. Again, that damage will increase. Uh, which is great just to add it on, but changing it to a charisma save may seriously benefit you in a lot of ways uh, to make things better off for you in order to do other things. This is any saving throw they have to make. So keep that in mind with whatever it is you're doing because sometimes spells uh, are not the only things that have saving throws. Sometimes special attacks or abilities do that as well. So keep in mind you can change any of those into a charisma save, which can be very, very powerful. At 6th level, you gain Tale of Hubris. You learn to weave a magical narrative that draws from out, out the fatal arrogance of your foes. When a creature scores a critical hit against you or an ally within 60 feet of you that you can see, you can use your reaction and expend one use of your bardic inspiration to target the attacking creature and evoke the story of their downfall. For one minute or until the target suffers a critical hit, any weapon attack against the, the target scores a critical hit on a roll of 18 to 20. At 14th level, the critical hit range for, of this feature increases to 17 to 20. Now, understand, if you're a champion fighter, at level 3, you get 19 to 20 as your crit range. And then at a higher level, you gain that expanded to 18 to 20. So at level 6, having this wide berth of crit range for anyone on your team to hit is huge. If you have barbarians with brutal critical, if you have or half orcs with um, savage uh, critical or savage attack, I believe it is, where you can add additional damage die on top of the damage you're already dealing. If you're a paladin, if you're a warlock with Eldritch Smite, uh, you can do a huge amount with this. Uh, rogues as well, this is a big moment to smash really, really hard and hit a giant crit. Uh, it is awesome. Now, the trade-off here is that it lasts for a minute and someone has to critically hit you or your party member. So it is reactionary. It is defensive. And it also depends on who hit your party member. It does only cost one bardic inspiration. So keep in mind with how you regurgitate bardic inspiration throughout your first third level ability of poetry and misery in combat there's a good reason that you that's perceivable that you'll be able to do this at least a few times uh again depending on how your party goes and how well you've been doing throughout the the, the event or the encounter more party members means more opportunities more attacks means more opportunities more saves means all the same thing it will happen. You'll have a great amount of opportunities to do this because I don't know if you know this, but DMs crit all the time. So most of the time they kind of keep it on the hush hush because uh, they're kind and they don't want to destroy your party. But DMs roll a lot of attacks so they have a higher percentage of critting and it happens often. If it happens on a big bad, ooh, is this a game changer to get that additional attack back to you? It's a great thing. You do have to be situational when you can use it, but this situation will come up more than you think. Uh, also at 6th level, you gain Unstoppable. Your words can twist the power of fate to create triumph from the promise of future despair. When you make an attack roll or a saving throw, you can gain a plus 10 bonus to the roll, but the next attack roll or saving throw you make takes a minus 10 penalty. 
If not used, this penalty disappears when you finish a short or long rest. You can't use this feature again until you finish a short or long rest, or until you've been reduced to zero hit points. This is what's really kind of interesting about this. You gain Tail of Hubris, which is super circumstantial, and you gain Unstoppable. This is what you need to do if you desperately need to make that attack roll, but more often than not, when you desperately need to make that saving throw. And that minus 10 will cripple you at some point. But for the duration that you have it, you might really need it. And this is, again, super situational, but it does go in tandem with Tale of Hubris. So you do have them both at the same time, which makes this level 6 a bigger level 6 than it would if you just got one of these. The final ability is Nimbus of Pathos. Upon reaching 14th level, you can touch a willing creature as an action and empower it with tragic heroism. For one minute, the creature is surrounded by mournful music and ghostly singing, granting it the following benefits and drawbacks. The creature has a plus four to AC. It has advantage on attack rolls and saving throws. When the creature hits a target with a weapon attack or spell attack, that target takes an extra 1d10 radiant damage. Any weapon attack against the creature scores a critical hit on a roll of 18 to 20. When this effect ends, the creature immediately drops to zero hit points and is dying. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. I absolutely love this. It is such an insane buff. And it will definitely destroy one of your party members. <laughs> Keep in mind, dying does not mean dead. So you do have the opportunity to prevent them from dying, to, get, to heal them up, and restore them to like a 1 HP or whatever it is. Having a plus 4 bonus to your AC is huge. If you have this on 14th level against uh, like paladin or something someone that has a high ac that plus four is going far um say they have 20 ac to begin with without any magical weapons rocking out at 24 it's pretty hard to hit it's a fact it's just really hard to hit um not counting if you do get magic items up your armor if you get a ring of protection or cloak of protection anything like that and say you bump it up or you had a plus one shield and you pump it up to 26 27 like, the scary thing is that's feasible. Uh, you also have advantage on saving throws and attack rolls. So you will hit more often. At 14th level, you do have to have some sort of trick or something. Then you can really tack on some damage for one minute. That's 10 turns to really kill almost everything in sight. And they take an extra 1d10 radiant damage, which is part of that attack. Which means if you do crit with advantage you'd get to double that to 2d10. And if they crit you, they can use Tale of Hubris on whoever crit you, and then you can up your chances of critting. Uh, it is one of those things that's just such a juggernaut of a minute that's, like, enticing. That's, like, that heroic, like, this is it. This is the last-ditch effort. I'm putting my life on the line for this. And then combat it with tale of hubris on top of it to help really really change the turn the tide of battle that's pretty great it's very story driven which is awesome that's something you don't really see uh, a lot of bards have something like this that it kind of all really really builds up on it like you desperately need these other things together to make this stuff happen uh, and it's great that it offers a lot of debuffs a lot of buffs and a lot of penalties and saving features and it's cool in that, like, you know, yin and yang possibility. So this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, I think it's awesome. I think a College of Tragedy Bard is something you should definitely have in one of your campaigns. Or you should definitely play as at least once. And you should definitely cast Nimbus of Pathos on someone because the ends justify the means here. With all that said and done, we're going to bring this video to a close. If you've made it this far, definitely hit that like and subscribe button. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters. We love you guys. Without you, we wouldn't be able to do the things that we do. And we're very grateful for that. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, the link is in the description. As well as the link to our good friends at Critical Failures. Check us out for our live stream game Wednesday night. And thank you for giving a Spooky Kid a chance.